Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. It's time for the Sports Blitz, the only live streamed local sports show in Arkansas with all the latest on the sports stories that matter to you. Live from the Lion's Den Golf Club studio, here are your hosts, Mark Freeman and Weldon Braxton. Welcome, welcome, welcome here into the Sports Blitz on a Wednesday. Glad you've chosen to join us today. Martin Freeman, Weldon Braxton, Matty Lassiter inside the studios to bring you the latest in local, statewide, and national sports. Weldon, we got a little bit of everything. We're going to make everyone happy today. Oh, we got a lot of, a lot of stuff. Uh, some good articles on college football, Arkansas Razorbacks involved. Uh, and some uh, a top ten article I think is interesting. You've got uh, possible coaches moving to the NFL. We're going to look at some local things with, with the Russellville Cyclones. Mark is back from posing for the body issue of ESPN the magazine, so I know he's ready to show off there, aren't you? Yeah, I uh, I'm going to keep my junk to myself today, <laughs> unlike some of those other folks. Who that's just the weirdest thing ever to me. You just got a picture or you got a magazine full of nude people. That's, creatively yeah. posed to not show off their stuff including 70 was 77 year old gary player golf legend hall of famer he's even showing it off i mean i, I looked at espn.com this morning i was like whoa that's <laughs> that's uh what was her what's her name the carrie walsh yeah the, Volleyball, t- the yeah. volleyball player yeah. And she looks all right, but then they got pictures of her pregnant, and it's just like that's just weird. I don't want anything to do with like, that. Yeah, ESPN, don't sell me on this whole artwork thing. We, we know why we like the body issue. We thumb quickly through the pages of the fellas, get past those. <laughs> and you know what? We know what the body issue is for, Mark. I don't want to hear about this artwork expression stuff. That's not what it is. Oh, no, it's no. you know exactly what it's for, and that's exactly what it's doing. we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. That was not on the list, but uh, it made its way in anyway. We can look at NBA, NFL, plenty of different things. Uh, Matt Stafford signs an extension. It looks like Aaron Hernandez has even uh, hit a new low. We'll talk about that. No extension. And, uh, no, no, no extension for him. Uh, he'll – no, I'll keep that one to myself there. <laughs> I'll keep that one to myself. Uh, Some stuff about Dwight Howard. Apparently Steve Nash said he didn't ever want to be a Laker, so uh, we'll have to see what he had to say. And uh, we'll look at a little other stuff in the NBA. But let's start real quickly with our Peters Family Living local sports look. You're going to want to stay tuned for the uh, Honda of Russell poll question today, too. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to look at the Razorbacks football schedule and we're going to give initial thoughts. I know you may have looked at it and, and poured over it a little bit more than I have, but I can tell you uh, my prediction may change here or there based on what I hear from the uh, fall practices, but we're going to give our initial look here in just a little bit. But here's our Peters Family Living Local Sports look. Went and visited with Johnny Johnson, the athletic director of the Russellville Cyclones, uh, the Russellville School District there, and he is very excited about things to come for this school district. Lots of cool stuff on the horizon for your Cyclones, Weldon. That's right. Uh, looks like they're going to be building a new basketball gym, uh, $8 million facility. They're asking for $12 million from the uh, – they're, they're asking for the school board to approve $12 million. I'm not sure about the, the way that money's going to come about, but they're, they're asking for that, and it looks like they're going to try to build a new gym. What he told me yesterday was that the – gym that's there currently would be the auxiliary gym now and then the auxiliary gym would be you know done away with and they'd build the gym there okay. and it would go out and face the parking lot as it's currently constructed the the gym would face the parking lot so uh it's very exciting i'm looking forward to seeing some renderings of it oh i'm excited about it too mark this, this is a big deal because it's something that when you look at the russellville high school campus and if you haven't been there in the last couple of years you're going to be blown away what they've done to it you look at the facade on the front obviously the fine arts building you can see that clearly but you even go behind there they've done a whole new deal they've rebuilt the whole back side of it as well but you look at russellville and their gymnasium clearly it's lacking i mean i'm not saying that to be mean but it's lacking you look at the opportunity to host state tournaments, and that's a big deal to be able to host a tournament. There's no way Russellville at this point could even put in a bid to host an event like that with their current facility. If you were to convert the uh, current main gym uh, into an auxiliary gym, that'd be great because now you could have summer league type AAU type tournaments. Obviously, you could use the big new gym, but you could use the old gym as a, a well seated auxiliary gym to have two going on at the same time. I know it's costly. 
I know money doesn't grow on trees. When you look at what you can have in this building, the events you can host, how great it's going to be, how lagging Russellville was behind as far as a gymnasium compared to some of the other six and seven A schools, I'm absolutely happy to see this get done. Yeah, it's something that, you know, you got schools like Ozark, who if you know me, I'm from Clarksville, we don't like Ozark. Mm -hmm. They got a brand new gym when I was a junior, played in it my senior year, and it was just like, oh my goodness, we are in this dump in Clarksville and you're playing in this that's just not right and Russellville's having to do the same thing go yeah. play in Fayetteville where they've got a brand new gym and it's just like what the heck that, is this it's beautiful I mean even Jesseville their facility is a little bit older in the Hot Springs area and we played a junior high tournament down there and it was a very very nice facility I know it's yeah. a little bit older now but still it's time for an upgrade. Mom L's facility is pretty nice. I mean, and they're they're a new five A or four A school uh, as well. So they're you know lots of different schools have got facility upgrades, and Russville's looking to do the same, and not necessarily to keep up with the Joneses as much as just to you know stay with the times. It's it's <laughs> a little bit they're a little bit behind. They know that, and Johnny Johnson's doing a good job there at Russville to get them to uh, to where he feels like they need to be. They uh, a couple of other very exciting news. Um, and notes from Russellville. They're going to try to get that $12 million. Eight of it will go to the gym. Uh, the other, it just depends on what the school board w- would agree to, uh, whether that's uh, – they're going to do some things with the baseball and softball facilities. Uh, he mentioned new dugouts, new backstops, moving home plate out a little bit and doing a little bit right back there uh, at Hickey Park for both the men and the women. And that's going to be done regardless. And then they're going to consider uh, updating the press box at the football field or considering even an indoor practice facility for the football team. And that would uh, do a lot for the football program just to get kids out there and to be able to practice year-round and not worry about the elements and things like that. That would be good. Uh, They are getting a new scoreboard that it's been paid for, sponsored, and uh, you'll find out more about that later on. But they're getting a new scoreboard at the football facility. Uh, lots of different facility upgrades that are on the books so that are that are coming up in the near future for the Cyclones. And also, well, I think you'll be interested about this. Okay. All their games in basketball, baseball, softball, football, volleyball. Uh, as of right now, they're all they know football, and basketball are it's going to happen. But they're working on uh, baseball, softball, volleyball as well. Will be live streamed via CSN Sports dot com on channel 12 is what awesome. he said it's he, he believes it's where it's going to be so you're going to get to see cyclone sports even if you're not necessarily in russellville oh that's a big deal too i mean we we look at television deals obviously the sec cutting up about 25 million dollars a piece obviously we're not talking about anything on that scale but still broadcasting is broadcasting in terms of advertising and marketing and the ability to sell that so i think it's a big deal and you, know, you look at, at leadership and that's what i'm thinking about as far as an athletic department Department. And anymore, we've seen this from Jeff Long all the way up at the U of A. Being a great athletic director, yes, it's about academics. Yes, it's about hiring coaches and being organized. But in this day and age, you need to be a fundraiser as much as anything. You have got to be able to shake hands, kiss babies, do whatever you have to do to bring in funds to build facilities. It's not just at the college level. You need to do it at the high school level. And that's what I'm happy to see from Russellville's leadership, doing a great job in the, as far as the administrative things, but also fundraising. Big deal. So you can go to csnsports.com. If you're not able to make a road trip and you want to watch the Cyclones or Lady Cyclones play, they're going to have a play-by-play and uh, color commentary right there with the camera and and all that. It's just going to be an excellent opportunity for Cyclones and Lady Cyclones fans to get to watch their team play, uh, regardless whether they can make the road trip or not, or whether they're just out. You know, he mentioned alumni in Tulsa in Texas, right, in right. Little Rock, you know, all these different places that you can watch from anywhere you got the internet, you got a chance to watch the uh, Cyclones play. You can also go check out the new Russellville uh, Sports website. They've done an overhaul on their web presence, and it's it looks really nice. It's rsdsports.russellvilleschools.net. They've got each school or each sport has its own uh, page and they're all set up very similar. You can put up your own pictures and all that to it, but you've got coaches contacts, you've got rosters that'll be updated, schedules that will be updated that already have been updated and it's going to be easy to navigate and that's one thing that for guys like me who are on the website all the time trying to find out when this game is or you know who did what, they'll be able to update those things very, very easily. I think that's going to be huge for Russville also. That is a huge deal. I don't think that's something we emphasize enough as 
far as high school sports, the ability to go online to a team website, find a schedule, find updates, find a news, different things like that. You know, having to dig around on a Fearless Friday and all these different places. You don't know if it's been updated or not. I think this is a big deal. You look at schools like Greenwood, North Little Rock. They do a great job on the Internet and social media. I'm glad to see Russellville getting up to that level. And, hey, they got a website, maybe some leader partnership deals there. I'm just throwing out some business, Mr. Mr. Managing Editor here at the River Valley Leader. I'm just – you know, saying maybe some possibilities out there. We'll see. It was very, uh, it was very interesting to talk with Coach Johnson yesterday, and he was he seemed to be open to doing about anything for uh, the betterment of Russellville athletics. So we could end up being in a good partnership there with uh, with Russellville School District. A couple other things that are new from Russellville High School: they're going to be competitive this year in cheer and dance for the first time oh. ever. That's going to be a big deal for them. They've also got a new cross country and wrestling coach, and they've uh, got a new volunteer tennis coach, Bill Rolette, uh, who's going to be stepping in and taking over the tennis program. They're looking to pump up numbers there, get some more students to come out and play tennis. Any any time well, you can get students to, to play sports, to play any sport, um, Keeps them out of, I don't want to say out of, yeah, off the streets. Keeps them out of trouble. <laughs> it could help them um, stay out yeah. of trouble and it'll give them more things to possibly do. Well, you just look at the, at the core of athletics and really any activity. Obviously, we're sports people. I, that's my background, obviously. But even if you're in the chess club or something of that nature, just as long as you're invested in something. And maybe you don't like football or basketball or checkers or chemistry. Maybe tennis may, it may be your thing. As long as we're offering as many opportunities to be involved in something, uh, because when you're part of something, this is going to sound kind of cheesy. You know, I hate cheesy things, but when you're a part of something that's bigger than you, it just brings out something more in you. So I'm always for uh, various activities. And let me see if there's anything else. He, he gave me a lot of information yesterday, so uh, we're looking forward to uh, teaming up with Russellville Schools and just seeing. You can go to their website again, rsdsports.russellvilleschools.net, and you can check out the new websites and the new goings-on at Russellville High School. Uh, and finally, as we close up, shop for the Peters Family Living Local Sports look. Went yesterday to the Little Sons Camp at Arkansas Tech oh. and got to watch some basketball as the – you know the best coaches in the area are coaching up these girls local ladies from i mean age i don't know five or six on up to high school uh in different skills and different um things that they needed to learn basically they, i saw somebody teaching a v cut I saw somebody learning the l cut i saw them mm. doing layups with their opposite hand and things like Good that stuff. they were working on a lot of different things uh that i thought was cool we got some pictures up at rivervalleyleader.com if you want to check that out if you're a kid grandkid or yourself you were out there yesterday you can go check those out and well they've got a men's camp talk to coach doug carl's camp for just a moment uh, they've got a men's camp coming up at the end of the month we have been preaching all summer long people need to get out to these camps you've got linemen camps for football you've got seven on sevens you got all these different things to make you better throughout the summer and there's also basketball camps as well they've got to get out there and get better because if you're not somebody else is that's right i mean you can't just depend on the school workout i know a lot of young athletes are are under that impression of well you know we're doing summer workouts at the school you know coach what's his name is having us do this and that you know a couple hours a few days a week at the gym that's my summer work well you just need to understand that everybody else is doing that same work too Therefore, you're not gaining an advantage. If you want to get ahead, if you want to make yourself better, take advantage of some of these camps. I got to tell you that what I'm surprised about is even getting Mark Freeman on some shooting drills to they teach should. You, to they educate should. some people. No, you know those girls could out shoot me probably any day of the week because those girls, man, that's true. That's one thing they do. They don't work on jumping high and trying to dunk. <laughs> and eat. you know, guys like us, we go to the lower the goals yeah, and go dunk. And the girls are just staying on ten foot, just dropping bombs, and they they can shoot well, it. So well, you know, that's the WNBA plea that. That they, they were trying to get you to buy into, Mark. Fundamentals. Yeah. We may not dunk on you, but boy, we're fundamentally sound. You know, I forgot to tell you, Mark, uh, you watched the show Friday, so I think you may know this, but you know, we had uh, Corey Williams, our good friend, on here, and we had, we decided we're going to have our big three. I don't know if you're going to call in or not. And we've made you the Chris Bosch because you're left handed. Oh. Uh, you know, oh. we, we couldn't decide, so uh, I think it was obvious I was LeBron. <laughs> he was good with being Dwayne Wade. Uh, well, Eric Spolstra, Matt. He was Eric Spolster over there. As oh, I'll, I'll fight Corey for Dwayne Wade, all right? But I think the left hand, though, that was that was the key to you being Chris Bosch. That ain't right at all. <laughs> that ain't right at all. 
I don't even like Corey anymore. He's not welcome anymore. <laughs> we just thought it was a good fit, you know. Oh, my. The, guy, the one guy we want to cut. Yeah, let's just get rid of him. <laughs> Corey, come on in here, you punk. All right, that's all That's all the time we have for our Peters Family Living local sports look. We'll come back and we'll deal with the Honda of Russville poll question. We'll look at the broad landscape of sports. Over 69 years of treating you like family, Peter's Family Living's main goal is customer service. That is their promise to their customers. They offer in-house financing on furniture and appliances and a 30-day money-back guarantee. For a friendly, no-pressure atmosphere, visit Peter's Family Living today at 201 North Arkansas Avenue, Russellville, online at petersfamilyliving.com or call 479-968-2929. Set your sights on savings right now at Honda of Russellville. We're offering our best deals of the year on remaining 2012 Honda ATVs, plus special introductory offers on select new 2013 Honda ATVs, all with zero down and easy monthly payments with approved credit. Be sure to check out the all-new Honda Foreman 4x4, now stronger, smarter, and harder working. How about a side-by-side? Well, Honda's got you covered with the big red, Honda's Big Red offers a proven Honda engine, automotive-style Honda automatic transmission with no belts to slip or break. Come in for a test ride today at Arkansas's legendary Honda dealer, Honda of Russellville. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogs Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could, so that you can go further too. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Sports Blitz on a Wednesday here in the RiverValleyLeader.com studios. Got a look today at the Honda of Russellville poll question, and it deals with an initial look at the Razorbacks football schedule. We'll take a look at it here in a little bit, but have no fear if you give us your answers. These are initial looks. You can change things up as you see fit coming up in in the season uh, as well before the first game if you pick after the louisiana lafayette <laughs> game then we don't count your score right, our team is awful one and eleven yeah <laughs> and we won this one but we're gonna lose everyone yeah now we want your score or, well not your scores your game predictions whether you've got arkansas uh winning them all losing them all somewhere in the middle uh, that's where i figure most of us will be somewhere in the middle uh, i've got between four and six wins, I'll tell you which ones I have and which ones uh, I'm up in the air about here in just a little bit, but that's going to be fun. We've got several different answers that I've seen so far that have come across the uh, the wire, but well, as we move on, uh, you know, you mentioned before the show that uh, Aaron Hernandez, uh, I shouldn't laugh about this, he's uh, now in jail on murder charges. It looks like he's going to be um, going to trial there, and now he's off Madden, so it's just... Yeah, it's rock bottom for Aaron Hernandez. Real rock bottom. You know, he's off uh, Madden. Obviously, he was a player on Madden. Uh, NCAA, even though he's of course not on the game, they you know have you can win coins, little card deals, and his picture was on one. The game is already out. I know a lot of you know you're playing it right now. But uh, the first update comes along. Aaron Hernandez will be off. So if you want to keep Aaron Hernandez on your game. Do not get the update, or you can get the update and just you know save that copy of the disc. But Hernandez will be off of it. Mark, he's got problems. I mean, now we're starting to see a timeline put together. You're talking about uh, he and the victim and some of the, the other alleged people involved, how they went out on a drive and how they went out to relieve themselves and gunshots were heard and only a couple of them came back. Some of that stuff is starting to come out. It just doesn't look good. Yeah, now there's um, somebody here on ESPN.com has said that uh, Aaron Hernandez is said to have confessed to someone, an accomplice. So uh, we'll have to see what comes out to be true. Regardless, Aaron Hernandez was hanging out with the wrong crowd. He was uh, 
apparently back even to his college days uh, a little bit of a hothead and sometimes he let himself fly off the handle and we don't know for sure but it looks like he is uh you know he's not look it doesn't look like it is he is wanted for murder he's you know chances are he was involved in some way with this sad sad story it really is sad mark the conversation the last couple of days though i want to get your take on it too uh, responsibility. That's been the, the theme. And we talked about the Urban Meyer situation, how he's deflecting everything. Where where does the blame go? Should Urban Meyer, Bill Belichick, how much blame should they you know have put at their feet? Is this an Aaron Hernandez complete issue? Seems like the, the, the discussion mark is, where do we put the blame? That's pretty easy to me. It's Aaron Hernandez's fault. You don't kill people. Yeah. You, know, you don't... I know that... There, there are places like Florida who will enable, be, be enablers, mm-hmm. and they'll sort of coddle people. And, oh, well, you've broken the law 75 times, Willie Williams. Come on over here. We, it doesn't <laughs> matter that you've been arrested 46 times in high school. We'll just give you a scholarship and let you play football. We'll straighten yeah. you out. So I understand where people would, would come up with. But at the end of the day, it's your own responsibility not to break the law. You know, the old Chris Rock saying, I guy doesn't break the law. Well, what do you want to cook? You're not supposed to break the law. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm 100% with you, too. And, you know, those things may have happened as far as Urban Meyer, Codlin, and whatever he denies. But even if it did, ultimately, how long is he supposed to be responsible for Aaron Hernandez? I mean, he's a guy who was drafted in 2010. So it's been a few years since he even dealt with Urban Meyer. If you're Bill Belichick and you're in the NFL, the, the NFL coaching dynamic is not that of a father figure. It's that of get to the facility, learn the offense, learn what we want you to do, execute it. If you can, great. If not, get out. It's a professional setting. Yep. It's not a father figure type atmosphere. Uh, it's at some point personal responsibility and accountability has to come into it. I'm with you. I can't see any way of blaming these coaches. Should Urban Meyer have had a stronger hand on Hernandez? Maybe. But I can't sit up here and say that would have prevented a murder situation. He would have just been off the Florida football team doing some of the same thing. So I really don't think it matters. I know it's a different conversation for a different day, but I did see yesterday where it was being discussed uh, about how when players are recruited to, co- to go to college, the coach will come in and sit in the living room and say, look, you guys have done a great job with this kid, and I want to continue what you've done. I want to continue in the same vein, the same way that you've gone about raising your son uh, or daughter. I want to go ahead and continue that in the next four years. And it seems like they're putting a lot of pressure on coaches to do uh, what – the parents job for them at the that's end of the right. day I, I, we could go like i said into a lot more in this but that's right uh, guys like aaron hernandez he apparently he's a sociopath if this stuff is to be believed and the fact that he did these things uh, there's nothing urban Meyer could have done about it no no question about it you know it's kind of like the whole charles barkley i'm not a role model deal and i know a lot of people had an issue with that but i i believe your role models your values uh where you get the things that make you who you are those things that come from your upbringing you know if your parents raise your grandparents aunts uncles no matter who raised you i feel like those things should come from those people i feel like i don't need to go to Tiger Woods to get my moral code. Yep. I don't need to go to Michael Jordan, Lord, Michael Jordan, to get my <laughs> moral code. But I need to get their work ethic. I need to look at them for those different things. Same thing with these coaches and, and players. I can't blame Urban Meyer just because of uh, Aaron Hernandez is off in some different things. Again, I think he would have been kicked off the Florida football team and doing some of the same things anyway. So I still think it's about personal responsibility. All right, let's change gears. We talked about this in uh, preparation today, and I thought it was kind of funny, but uh, what do you think is going to happen today when, when Dwight Howard goes to sign his Houston Rockets? <laughs> is he going to shake it? I don't know, guys. I don't know if I can do this. Uh, I can't do it. I can't sign. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Steve Nash said that he would never wanted to be a Laker, and he was just uh, he never felt like he was wanted. Poor thing. They paid no. him all those millions of dollars for him to uh, come over there and play basketball for a living. He's just so mistreated. Yeah, well, as far as him signing, I w- the Rockets should have done what the Clippers did with Chris Paul. You know, the Clippers, I saw the picture tweeted at midnight, even before I went to bed, him signing on the dotted line. If I'm Houston, I would have had Dwight Howard in a similar situation because you never know. I don't know if he signed right now as of 1125 Central time, but if he hadn't, I'm sitting there saying, okay, Dwight, here's the pen. And then he said, uh, I guess I'm not sure I need a few more days. Because I mean, you don't have to sign today. Today's just the first day you can sign. Uh, but as far as the L.A. situation, 
Steve Nash was right. I heard his comments in terms of, you know, if he didn't want to be a Laker, then it's probably best for everybody involved that he didn't come back. You know, it's best you don't want him there for a four year contract, five year deal where he's unhappy, moaning and groaning. He and Kobe and Dan Tony are into it. You didn't need that anyway. You know, Dwight, and I think you're on the same page. His issue has always been mental toughness. His issue has always been, you know, feeling bad and, you know, feeling sorry and, and not manning up in certain situations. And I still think, even with James Harden, if he wants to win a championship, he's going to have to get past that because, you know, if you get to the Western Conference Finals or the NBA Finals, your manhood is going to be called upon at some point. And that's what we got to see from Dwight. Yeah, I'm sort of confused with Dwight Howard. He <laughs> d- Does he want to be the man? Uh, I've heard – he wasn't happy in Orlando, not because the, they didn't build a team around him. It's because he wasn't necessarily the focal point of the offense. Everything ran through him, and he was dishing off to shooters and whatnot. That's exactly what Houston's done. That's what, that's what they're trying to do. They're going to get rid of a, a Sheik. Uh, well, they, they probably aren't going to just because nobody wants to take on that contract, and uh, they'd like to have some insurance in case Dwight's not healthy. But – they're basically built the same type of team around him. Hey, right. Chandler Parsons. Hey, James Harden. Go stand out there and hit threes. And uh, we'll, we'll see if Jeremy Lin and Patrick Beverly can do the same. But Dwight Howard is going to have to uh, understand that he's not Michael Jordan. He's not that kind of guy. He's not going to – everything's not – he's not Shaq. Everything's mm-hmm. not going to run through him. He's going to have to get in where he fits in. And he can be a 20 and 15 guy if he's healthy. I don't know what he's yeah. wanted about. That, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up about uh, being confused about him because I think Dwight Howard had a revelation while in Los Angeles. Because remember, the talk was, I want to go to Brooklyn, be a star, you know, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Goes, you know, that talk quieted down. Obviously, some things didn't work out. Goes to LA to a large market, sees the pressure, criticism, all that. I think at some point, this is just my observation, I think at some point he realized Orlando wasn't so bad of a place. It may not have been a huge market. He may not have been the center of attention in a, a populated area. But I think he understood that it wasn't as bad as he may have thought. And so now he's going back saying, well, maybe this big city, big pressure deal in for me. Let me retreat to Houston. Obviously, Houston's a huge city, but it's not L.A. or New York. Like Shaq said, he's a small town like Houston, (laughs) the fourth largest city in the United States. I I would advise Shaq to go look at some things before that comment. Some geography. Yeah, some geography. But I get what he's saying. It's one of those deals where you you get a taste of the big spotlight, realize, eh, maybe not my deal, kind of go to a Houston where you're a little bit more off the radar. You're behind the Knicks, Lakers, Nets, Clippers as far as a big market splash. You were uh, impressed as we changed gears so softly and so, you know, perfectly to the NFL with the – contract extension of Matt Stafford right. looks like he's uh and we could get into this conversation too that we'll we'll have here later on in the summer about ranking NFL quarterbacks running backs all these different positions uh Matt Stafford fits into your top 10 right he is close yeah I would probably put him in there he's he's right around he's the, the area edge, of your yeah. top 10 and now he's got a new contract with the Detroit Lions yeah 53 million dollars total I think 41 guaranteed I mean it's a massive deal no question about it and Mark Stafford's one of those borderline guys where you see some elite talent but you also see a lot of inconsistencies. He had over 40 touchdowns, make 15, 16 interceptions. Uh, the year they made the playoffs in 2011, last year, horrible season, threw a lot of interceptions, not a lot of touchdowns. Who's the real Matt, Matt Stafford? I'm close, but I'm, I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass. That offensive line was atrocious. That defensive secondary was pitiful. No running game whatsoever. All of those things matter. I'm looking at Matthew Stafford my issue with him, even when he was at Georgia, extremely talented, but he's so talented to where he's lazy. Dude, he's very lazy in his mechanics. Arm slot goes down. He starts just slinging balls and throwing interceptions. Matt Stafford's got to realize that he's not so talented to where he can use lazy mechanics and still get it done. I think he's a top five talent as far as throwing the ball, but because he gets lazy, he gets inconsistent, and that's why I'm kind of shaky about this big extension. So far in his career, Matt, Matt Stafford, he's been in the league, what, five years? Let's About see. five years. Like, two of them two, were injured. 2009. Yeah. So he's, he started in 2009. He's had $83 million in guaranteed money so far. Mm. Uh, so the NFL's done him all right. It's and a lot of money. It remains to be seen, like you said, if he's worth it. We'll see this year if he can bounce back. Good Lord. You've got 
Calvin Johnson. All you have to do is just throw it as far and as high as you freaking can and just let him go get it. Uh, if you if you get in trouble, throw it to the third row. He may go catch it there <laughs> he anyway. He probably would. Bring it in. Megatron. Uh, but, they got to yeah, get a we'll running see. game. They, yeah. yeah. Didn't they get Reggie Bush? They got Reggie Bush. Hopefully that'll help. Offensive line, LaShore. Hopefully he'll be healthy. But we'll I like see. LaShore. I hate him when I'm playing fantasy football against him because I was like, who is this dude I've never heard of in my life who's <laughs> yeah. killing me? Uh, yeah, he's neither here nor there. Uh, we're going to hit a break real quick. We've got plenty of stuff left today. I'll tell you why I've got Arkansas between four and six wins. I think Weldon is even a little more optimistic than I am. RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley, offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site, as well as police news and coverage from important meetings along with the personal stories, all at one convenient click. Check out rivervalleyleader.com. Lions Den Golf Club is now offering a winter golf special to members and guests alike. Get your cart and greens fee covered for just $20. Take Highway 22 West of Bay Ridge or call 479-229-4162 for Lions Den Golf Club. Over 69 years of treating you like family, Peter's Family Living's main goal is customer service. That is their promise to their customers. They offer in-house financing on furniture and appliances and a 30-day money-back guarantee. For a friendly, no-pressure atmosphere, visit Peters Family Living today at 201 North Arkansas Avenue, Russellville, online at petersfamilyliving.com or call 479-968-2929. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogs Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could, so that you can go further too. We're back on the Sports Blitz. Mark Freeman, Weldon Braxton, Matty Lassiter here. I don't know why we keep saying Matty because he doesn't really talk in the microphone. They can feel his presence. They know when he screws up. (laughs) Something's like, in the background. So we have to give him his props. He makes the sound go smoothly, as smoothly as he possibly can. Uh, We've had our share of ups and downs with sound in the past especially when maddie wasn't here that was funny oh yeah oh my gosh that was one of the funniest things i've ever seen in my (laughs) life and ken did it and he uh he had some issues but we are glad to be back here bringing you the latest in local and statewide sports we're going to hit today's honda of russellville poll question here in just a little bit you've got the uh the question today, you know, we're going to take a look initially at the football schedule, 12 games, where do you see Arkansas landing? Do you see them uh, somewhere like I do between four and six wins? Do you see them seven, eight wins? Do you see them less than four wins? Where do you have the Razorbacks? Uh, you obviously can change your mind as you learn more about some of the players and you learn uh, about what's going on at, at fall practice. But, well, I'm looking forward to, uh, to looking at this here in just a little bit. We've yeah. got quite a few Different answers, most of them in the same range. Same neighborhood, yeah. I'm looking forward to getting to that, too. It's hard to answer this question because you just don't know what Arkansas has. You don't know if they, you know, what they have at quarterback, what they have on the offensive line. Other teams have X factors, too. It's just so hard to get all these unknown variables in. But, Mark, one thing that I wanted to look at that caught my eye before uh, the show was um, Danny Connell, a ESPN analyst, came out with a list yesterday on College Football Live. And I think this was 
was in the spirit of Brad Stevens, the basketball coach, going from Butler to the Celtics, sort of a surprise. In football, we know Chip Kelly went from the uh, Oregon Ducks to the Philadelphia Eagles. So Danny Connell ranked his top five coaches most likely to make the jump from college to the NFL. And his list goes as follows. Number five, Bo Pelini of Nebraska. Number four, David Shaw of Stanford. Number three, Pat Fitzgerald of Northwestern. Uh, number two, Brian Kelly of Notre Dame. And number one, Kevin Sumlin of Texas A&M. Mark, what do you think? Well, it basically sounds like that he is just ask some people in the NFL who have you what names have you heard oh those five let me just write those down. those are my rankings <laughs> yeah. well that's convenient isn't it uh congratulations Danny Cannell you've done your research I he's not my favorite analyst he no. doesn't doesn't do a Florida whole lot State for me. apologies yeah I I do think that Kevin Sumlin and uh Brian Kelly are going to be in the NFL sooner than later though so uh he probably has those right I heard Somebody was mentioning Kevin Sumlin for uh, some NFL jobs coming up next year. Yeah. So, and we were all kind of, uh, well, I don't want to say shocked, but we thought Brian Kelly was a candidate for the Kansas City job. Absolutely. So. absolutely. And I, for me, I don't know how he ranked these teams. I would put, I don't know if it's coaching talent or just likelihood to go. If we were doing just likelihood, I'd put Brian Kelly number one. I think Brian Kelly – is the most ambitious coach in college football. And when you mentioned he almost went to the Kansas City Chiefs. Brian Kelly, he's he walks the line between confident and arrogant. I mean, look, nobody thinks Brian Kelly is more awesome than Brian Kelly. <laughs> and I think that ego in the next couple of years, especially if Notre Dame has another good season or two in there, I think he goes to the NFL. Kevin Sumlin, I'm a big fan, still need to see more. You know, took over Houston program that, you know, they may not have been elite, but Art Bryles had them there for a while. And, you know, they were on the Kevin Cobb era, and then he sort of took over Case Keenum and everything. Need to see more. Pat, Pat Fitzgerald, I guess he's kind of like the Brad Stevens. He's taken a program that's kind of been mediocre in a major conference. He's made them sort of an 8-10 to 10 win type team in Northwestern. So I think there's the appeal. The intriguing guy for me, because it's not Bo Pelini. I'm not even going to talk no, about Bo. No, I don't like him. The intriguing guy for me is David Shaw, because he's regarded as one of the brightest minds in college football, really known for his organizational skills as much as his offensive mind. And obviously, you know I love that hardball coaching tree. I don't even have to get into my affection for Greg Roman, 49er offensive coordinator. You know, David Shaw flirted with the Chargers a little bit in the offseason. I think he's a guy, because he runs you know, a pro-style system, it's not like he'd be a huge culture shock. I could see him making the jump as well. Yeah, we'll see how that uh, turns out. You had a couple other things, but I thought this was funny on the NFL note. Uh, ESPN it reported that a Browns fan took one last shot at his team. Did you hear about this? Oh, no. He, uh, <laughs> he wanted the Browns players to be his uh, pallbearers at his funeral because he was dying. <laughs> he said, so they can let me down one more time. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's awful, isn't it? That is awful. Well, you know, the Browns are awful. So. Yeah, so. And they don't have a quarterback. They don't know uh, what they're going to do. Uh, it, it is a messy situation. Uh Another quick article. I don't want to jump ahead to our Honda Russellville Hog talk. We got one more non hog article I want to look at. It's Todd Blackledge made a bold prediction. He's got Miami under Al Golden playing for a national championship before Florida State of Florida. On the surface, it sounds crazy, but then I think about it. I don't love Muschamp. I don't love Jimbo Fisher, but Miami was a mess when he took over, and he's still getting them out of that mess. Yeah, I've said it before. I think Jimbo Fisher at Florida State, even with all that talent, he has 10-2 and two every year written all over yeah. him. And maybe with the playoff system, maybe that'll help get him in and he can make a run. I'm not a big fan. Muschamp showed me a little bit last year. I've been on the fence about him. Is he too wired and jacked up to be a head coach? Because a coordinator, you can be jacked up. Head coach kind of need more of an even keel. Jury's still out on him. I'm not sure about Blackledge's prediction, but I don't love the coaches at Florida, Florida State, so maybe the door is open. It may just be more by default than Could anything, be. like you said. I, I'm i not a Jimbo Fisher fan. Uh, he's a great recruiter. I'm not, yeah. not going to take anything away from him there, but I don't know about him developing that talent and being able to coach it up on the field. Uh, I hadn't seen anything to – to prove that he's going to. Uh, Muschamp did get a lot out of his team last year. I didn't expect him to be as good even as they were. Uh, but, yeah, you know, Miami may – I still see – Miami's got a long way to go. They Maybe do. he's just got a high opinion of Al Golden, which, you know, in the middle of the summer, you come out with 
<laughs> outrageous stuff like this where you're just like, you know, I really like this coach. Let's just say he's better than Bear Bryant. And yeah. you do it, and everybody's like, what? Well, people took notice. Any coach that wears a tie on the sideline, I get some points, too. You yeah. Know, elevate some points. Weird rather. looking hat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what Al Golden's. Al Golden's a Oh, tie. gotcha. I thought you were t- taking the bear, bro. Oh, well, the bear was back back when class was class on the <laughs> sideline. I mean, we can't even just, we can't even talk about the bear. You know, Al Golden trying to restore a little bit of it with his tie on the sideline. But it is interesting because, you, like you said, Miami's got a long way to go. I hope it's one of those deals where Al Gold doesn't just burn out, like gets the program stable, but then kind of burns out. But that whole the whole Florida situation, we're used to seeing all three of those programs be elite at some point in the last 25 years. All three, you know, Florida State, Florida are top 10 teams, but you don't really see them getting on par with like an Alabama or an LSU yet. No, they're – they're a little ways away from it. Let's uh, let's move on. Do you have anything else as far as those letter those uh, preseason things going? No, not right now. Right. I got some hog stuff on. Yeah, I did at. too. I got, I got a couple things that I saw here on ESPN.com the other day. I found it kind of interesting, and this will this kind of goes to what we're our poll question was and where we're uh, going to put them overall. But they're breaking down individual positions and individual uh, well not necessarily positions individual player groups you got linebackers today you had defensive line yesterday Arkansas the number three ranked according to Edward Ashoff ESPN uh, defensive line in the conference but the 12th ranked linebackers in the conference Mm. my only question is how are Auburn and South Carolina going to be worse at linebacker? <laughs> now, I, I don't I don't mind A.J. Turner and Otha Peters. Uh, I do think it's going to be odd that Martrell Spate, the uh, North Little Rock pro, uh, former North Little Rock prospect project, uh, is going to be a junior college transfer in, and he's supposed to be one of the best ones, and they're looking for a lot out of Brooks Ellis yeah. at linebacker. Uh, you wonder who else is going to be able to step in there and give him some depth. Uh, they say experience is a bigger issue than talent with this unit. Also, the staff could spend the preseason moving everyone around. Uh, it's going to be tough to tell. Well, in between now and then, who's going to be where from game to game or from practice to practice before they even get to the games? Who's going to be playing what position? Right, and this is what I like about Coach Bielema. He's already made it clear that he's emphasizing doing a few things right as opposed to being mediocre at a lot of things. And I think that philosophy is huge when you look at these Arkansas linebackers. You know you've got some players with inexperience. You're trying to mix in a freshman, trying to mix in some JUCO guys who haven't played at this level. Uh, You're looking at some sophomores. Not a lot of experience. Don't want to weigh them down with a whole lot in terms of your system. I think Chris Ash, defensive coordinator, keeps it simple. And I want to see who emerges from this group because we talked about this, I think, last week. A.J. Turner, Otha Peters, the more highly decorated among these linebackers. Yeah, there were some injuries, but I thought Bielema sent a message to him. I think you and I talked about this in the spring. You know, you're number two on the depth chart coming out of spring. I know you're supposed to be mighty Otha Peters and mighty A.J. Turner, but we don't want you having that mentality. We didn't like some of the things we saw effort-wise. We know you can play, but we want to motivate you in the summer. I expect those two to emerge to be uh, two of the linebackers. Then you look at a Brooks Ellis from Fayetteville. Uh, you look at a Martell Spate. Uh, Mike Tavares may be a little bit further away. But this linebacking core, Mark, I think they're going to be simplistic. And I think they're going to try to do a few things really well, as, as opposed to a lot of things kind of so-so. You can sort of see what Brett Bielema and the staff – thought about the linebackers by how who they went after in recruiting. And they got a bunch of uh, offensive line and linebacker help from the JUCO ranks uh, just because they knew they needed to bolster those units. And guys like Martrell Spate are going to have to step in and make an impact right. immediately. I did think it was interesting that they had Arkansas at number three on the defensive lines. Uh, I think they were above Alabama and LSU, if I'm mm. not mistaken. They had uh, – they had Probably South, South Carolina. Carolina number one. I'm I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't remember who number two was, but I'll have to look here real quickly. Uh, but I thought that was interesting. They had Arkansas number three at defensive line. That's supposed to be the, the uh, strong suit of the Razorback defense. Yeah, you look at the Bobby Petrino era in terms of recruiting. I know we knocked it a lot, and rightfully so. But one thing I think he understood was I got to get this defensive line up to par. And obviously, you see what he's left over in that department. He did a pretty good job, and it's interesting. 
interesting because the SEC defensive line, we talk about how important it is. But you got to, the key to it though is you got to have depth along that defensive line. When guys get hurt, you've got to have a defensive line that not only stops the run, but gets after the quarterback as well. I think that'll be huge, a pass rush for the Razorbacks. All right. Well, we've got a caller on the line. Who we got on the line with us? Hey, this is Jason. Hey, what's Jason. going on, Jason? Hey, y'all doing? Awesome. Doing well, man. What do you uh, What do you think of these uh, ESPN rankings of football? I know you're ready to talk football. Oh, of course. You know I'm going to call in when y'all start talking football. <laughs> um, man, I'm going to have to agree. You know, like what, what Weldon was talking about, just with our linebackers and stuff. We're young, but man, you know, I think there is talent there with Peters and uh, Turner for sure. I think Martel Martel Spade is going to come in and. Step up. I wish he was been able to go through spring practice like uh, Mike Tavares was, but he wasn't able to. But uh, ev- from everything I'm reading, that dude is a freak. He's just, just you know, just whipped up, ready to go. I think he's up to like uh, 235 right now, and mm. I saw where Osa Peter was up to like 240. So if you put Peters at uh, middle linebacker and have uh, you know Tavares or Spade at outside linebacker to go with AJ Turner, I think that's a solid linebacker core there. And then you know like. Um, what everyone was talking about, Bruce Ellis, you know, he's got a lot of potential to come in, too. And with the deep, deep, defensive line that we have, I think our linebackers are really going to excel with the coaching staff that we have. Yeah, I found the, the link here. They've got Arkansas at third behind South Carolina and Florida, so the best in the, the West as far as defensive lines go. You've got Chris Smith as the number two rated defensive end behind. I, I wondered who that Yeah, who be. is it? There was that Heisman Trophy candidate that people oh, were talking yeah. about from South Carolina, Jadavion Clowney. Uh, but then you've also, also with Arkansas got Trey Flowers, Byron Jones, Robert Thomas, uh, and then you've got a, a bunch of guys that the staff is excited about. Uh, ESPN says like Jamichael Winston, Brandon Lewis, Lewis, Darius Fallon, Demarcus Hodge, and Deatrick Wise Jr. Uh, Jason, that defensive line is looking pretty good. Yes, it does. I mean, our starters, I think every one of them has an opportunity to be all SEC this year. And then with the depth that we have, I think our defensive ends are just unbelievable with the size that they bring. You know, most of our young guys are, you know, 6'4", 6'5", you know, that range. And they're all, you know, 250 to 260, which is what you need in the SEC to try to stop the run not just the pass. And uh, I think the defensive tackles are just solid all the way across from the starters to the depth. Yeah, well, Jason, while you've uh, while we've got you on here, we ought to get you to give us your schedule or yeah. your uh, prediction so far. Uh, now, obviously, you can change that as as the preseason goes along as you see fit. But what do you, when you look at the schedule right now, wh- how many wins do you see for the Hogs? Well, man, uh, you know, you start off with the schedule. You got the three cupcakes, and then you go to Rutgers, which Rutgers is going to be a tough game. But uh, I think uh, I think Arkansas can pull that out, you know, and that's four zero with A and M coming to town. And then you got the death, you know, just four games in a row that are just death row of games. You know, you got uh, A and M, and then you go to the swamp, and you have South Carolina at home, and then you go to Alabama. If Arkansas can win one of those games, I would be tickled. Now, if they won two, it'd be you know phenomenal. But I just don't, I can't see that happen because probably all four of those teams are going to be a top ten teams anyway. So if you squeak one out there, you're looking at, what's that, that's uh, four, that's five. And then, you know, the rest of the schedule, Auburn, that's winnable. Ole Miss, that's going to be tough to play at Ole Miss and win that one. Uh, Mississippi State, they killed us last year, so surely we've got some uh, uh, revenge, you know, going in the rock, and we always play good in the rock. And then LSU. So you could go anywhere from, say, four and eight, you know, or you could go anywhere from, uh, say, I'm saying at the best, eight and four. So I'm going to meet somewhere in the middle and go six and six, and I think we'll go to a bowl game. I oh, think that's I like that's that. probably where I am. Jason, you got anything else you want to add? No, man, that's it. All right, thank you for calling today, Jason. All right, talk to you all later. Oh, we appreciate the call. Uh, yeah, he's right about where I am. You know, if if Arkansas won eight games, you would see me streaking down Main Street. I'm not joking. When the they body end that, issue. That end of that LSU game, if Arkansas was able to win their eighth game, unless they'd done it before then, if they'd won oh, eight games before, before then, yeah. I, yeah, I'm still taking off running. You just even fast. Go ahead and call the cops now. If they win the eighth game, you're gonna see me. Uh, but I've got them somewhere between four and six. And my question. Uh, you know, Rutgers, that's a big one on mm-hmm. the road. They beat Arkansas last year. Arkansas was supposed to be good. Now, I know it was part of the uh, terrible season that was. And he mentioned playing well in the Rock and tell Louisiana Monroe that. Yeah. Uh, Arkansas, 
they do need to step up, step up and play better in the rock. So hopefully uh, Mississippi State gets the full brunt of Arkansas turning that back into a home field advantage. Yeah, I mean, you look at you – know, I'm looking at Mississippi State's schedule here. They're going to be coming off games against South Carolina, A&M, and Alabama. That's their previous three weeks going into Arkansas. I just – and, again, I, I think this is a great schedule. If you watch this show, you know I've said this before. For a team that's just trying to make a bowl game, not trying to win a championship, I think it's a great schedule. I, I can't explain how huge it is to have a bye week before Auburn, a team that you were on the same plane with anyway, and now you have a bye week before them at home. Same situation with Mississippi State, and I just talked about how they're going to be beat up going into that game. I think that's huge for Arkansas getting into a bowl game. Now, as I said, if you're trying to win a championship, you'd be mad because you'd be like, look, I don't need Auburn and Mississippi State at home. I can go beat them on the road. I'm a championship team. I would like to have had Florida and Alabama at home, but I have to go there. But we know that's not the goal this year. The goal is a bowl game. So Alabama and, and uh, Florida – Throw them away, not beating them anyway. You just hope from a morale standpoint, an injury standpoint, you survive that stretch. But as far as winning games, that's what I like about the schedule, those Alabama-Mississippi State games. There are a couple things that bode, I want to say necessarily well for Arkansas, but better for Arkansas. I had them beating Auburn anyway. You've got a week to recover after Alabama, as you mentioned, coming into Auburn, uh, the Auburn game that will be at home in Fayetteville. And then you've got another week to prepare after Ole Miss for Mississippi State. Both winnable games. I do have uh, Arkansas winning the Auburn game. Mississippi State was a toss-up. I'll give it to Arkansas to get them to five wins at least uh, because of the extra week to prepare. And then if you give them Rutgers, that's, that's six wins. So uh, any other win aside from that, I would be I would be happy with. That means if you beat A&M, uh, you're probably not going to beat A&M. No. You're probably not going to beat Florida. You're probably not going to beat South Carolina. You are definitely not beating Alabama. If you win any one of those first three games aside from Rutgers, you've got a chance at six wins. Uh, if you can beat Ole Miss on the road, I don't necessarily see that happening. But if you can do that, you can get to seven. Right. If you can beat LSU, which I don't see happening, you get to eight. So – there are uh, there's reason for optimism in the fact that Arkansas can fight for a bowl game if you beat Rutgers and Mississippi State along with the first three games uh, wins and then get another SEC win which I predict to be Auburn you've got a shot to win six so that's kind of where I am that's where I'm at too when you look at the surprise game is there a surprise game LSU at the end of the year a middle game Jason mentioned if they can get one of those middle games I don't know where the surprise game is but is it out there we'll see I'll tell you exactly what I want to see happen this season and where my mind is going to be. Weldon asked me before the show, and I've got to share it with you. I think a lot of you will, will agree, and you've sort of done this in the past, whether Arkansas was really good or really bad or whether you thought there was somewhere in between. I'll tell you that and much more right after this break. Over 69 years of treating you like family, Peter's Family Living's main goal is customer service. That is their promise to their customers. They offer in-house financing on furniture and appliances and a 30-day money-back guarantee. For a friendly, no-pressure atmosphere, visit Peter's Family Living today at 201 North Arkansas Avenue, Russellville, online at petersfamilyliving.com or call 479-968-2929. Set your sights on savings right now at Honda of Russellville. We're offering our best deals of the year on remaining 2012 Honda ATVs, plus special introductory offers on select new 2013 Honda ATVs, all with zero down and easy monthly payments with approved credit. Be sure to check out the all-new Honda Foreman 4x4, now stronger, smarter, and harder working. How about a side-by-side? -side? Well, Honda's got you covered with the big red, Honda's Big Red offers a proven Honda engine, automotive-style Honda automatic transmission with no belts to slip or break. Come in for a test ride today at Arkansas's legendary Honda dealer, Honda of Russellville. Lions Den Golf Club is now offering a winter golf special to members and guests alike. Get your card and greens fee covered for just $20. Take Highway 22 West to Bay Ridge or call 479-229-4162 for Lions Den Golf Club. Live. We 
failed to make mention earlier in the Peters Family Living Local Sports look that tomorrow at Firehouse Subs here in Russellville, right over there by Arkansas Tech on Arkansas Avenue, the River Valley Tropics local baseball team uh, traveling American Legion baseball team will be there from 5 to 8 doing a fundraiser. If you're able to, go over there and help them out. A portion of the proceeds and the profit will go toward helping the Tropics And uh, as they travel around the state and play. They're doing very well. We'll talk a little bit more about them on Friday. We'll look at their record and what they have accomplished so far this summer. Done a very good job with local talent of traveling around, representing your schools and uh, themselves, and just getting some experience and playing well. And Again, 5 to 8 tomorrow. That's Thursday at Firehouse Subs here in Russellville. I teased before the break that there's just one thing that I ask of Arkansas this year in all these football games, uh, and that's just a very simple thing. Last year, I don't know if you're like me and you watched some of these games like the the Alabama game and you knew Arkansas was going to lose and you just thought, please don't get embarrassed. Just keep it respectable. If you lose by three touchdowns, and it's not a 77 to nothing game. If it's not a 52 to nothing game like Alabama was, I would have been all right. I would have been okay. It was, no, I know we were going to lose. It was just one of those things that was going to happen. Keep it respectable. Just compete. That's what I want to see in every game this year. Maddie made a, a notice about, uh, he said, what well, you want Rutgers, you want to beat them bad. He had um, Arkansas beating either Florida or LSU, which I told or him he was say smoking both? something. Or did he say both? Did you say both? Or? You might go with both. Uh, so it's – I don't know if he's smoking something green or crack. I don't know new stuff. From what it is. Know. But I'd like to have some of whatever that is. If Arkansas does, the, does win those two games, wow. If not, okay, I, you know, it's kind of what I expected. I just want to see them compete in each one of these games, make them back alley fist fights and just be – in the game. I don't care if you lose the games we expect you to lose. If you win one of them, it's just going to be a hooray. But I just want them to be in the games and compete. And I, that's that's an interesting perspective. I think, Mark, there's value in – And I say that now because when it gets there, I, you know, like, it, all bets it. are off. Yeah. yeah, You lost, you suck. <laughs> this yeah. is where I am. It, it, it happens. And I, I think that there's value in not beating yourself. And I think that's going to be a night and day from last year to this year. I think Arkansas's losses, and they're going to take some thumps on the head this year. I'm excited because I believe under Coach Bielema, those losses are going to come strictly down to just talent. And Arkansas is going to get beat from talent. And you'll be surprised that if you can only get beat because of talent, how much of a better football team you'll be. Arkansas lost games and got embarrassed in games because they beat themselves in addition to the opponent beating them. They beat themselves with turnovers and penalties. And I think a lot of that's going to get cleaned up. So you know, Alabama and A&M may run for touchdowns on Arkansas, but it won't be because Arkansas wasn't in the right spot. It was just one player that was good on the other team beat a player on Arkansas who wasn't very good, but at least they were in the right position. And I think that's going to carry so much value the fact that Arkansas will not be beating themselves this year. If you're Alabama, you may beat Arkansas down again, but you're going to have to do it on your own. You're not going to get a lot of turnovers, a lot of penalties. I think that's going to help Arkansas stay competitive in some games this year. That's going to be refreshing, not seeing 75 false false start penalties. (laughs) Uh, That used to just drive me absolutely nuts. Now, the offense was good enough in several of those years to kind of overcome it. And really for Petrino, it seemed like a lot of times he was like, yeah, whatever we got 15 yards to work with instead of 10 we yeah, you know, yeah. let's just stretch everything out a little bit more and just fling it out fling it around uh, i feel like the the fact that Brett Bielum is going to emphasize uh, commitment to running the football and being very uh, clean what I clean exactly no penalties a uh, few turnovers i'm going to appreciate that uh, i do prefer the open wide open passing game and all that but i'm going to enjoy watching some uh, very quality sec football look i liked watching alabama play last year because they did what they did well and mm-hmm. they were able to go out and execute i feel like arkansas is trying to get to that level and they don't have there's not a better coach in the sec for doing the way kind of taking the alabama blueprint and doing it the way they've done it and been successful then brett bielema i'm excited about that i'm excited about it too and you look at last year and this is why I feel like this is such an important area to look at. 
Last year, Tyler Wilson, in terms of yardage and attempts, he had decent-looking numbers as far as throwing the football. The problem is there were interceptions and fumbles mixed in. It was almost like a worse version of the 2009 team. You remember that 09 offense? It was 80-yard touchdown or punt. It was like one or the other. Uh, but in this, in the last year's team was like, okay, Arkansas could move the ball and they could score and look hot at times. Then they would fumble or throw a silly interception. You know, I think they jumped out with fourteen nothing on Mississippi State. They jumped out on a lead. I think on Mississippi State and looked like, okay, this is the old Razorbacks. And then the turnovers and then silly mistakes happened again. So just playing clean, even if you don't have a lot of talent, goes a long way. We are uh, out of time for it today, but we'll be back on Friday. Weldon will be here. I will be out going to take some kids to Branson for church. But he's going to start with looking at some of these uh, ESPN position rankings by yeah. the bloggers as well as some other different things that I think will be interesting to you. When I get back, we're going to start looking at position-by-position position breakdowns in the NFL, which I really enjoy. We'll tell you who our – best quarterback in the league is that's an interesting conversation uh, based on a lot of different factors and we'll do that for several different positions so we want to have you weigh in every day on our honda of russell poll question uh, as i said though that's all the time we have for today we'll be back on friday at rivervalleyleader.com at 11 o'clock for weldon and maddie i'm mark so long weldon will see you at 11 o'clock on friday <laughs>